darkest day, Christ on the road to Calvary, tried by sinful men, torn and beaten then, nailed to a cross of wood. This the power of the cross, Christ became To see the pain written on your face, bearing the awesome weight of sin, every bitter thought, every evil deed, crowning your blood stained brow. This the the daylight flees, now the ground beneath quakes as its maker bows his head. Curtain torn in two, dead are raised to life, finish the victory cry. This the But you have sent him from your side to walk upon this guilty sod and to become the Lamb of God. Your gift of love they crucified, they laughed and scorned him as he died. The humble king they named a fraud and sacrificed the lamb of god oh lamb of god sweet lamb of god i love the holy lamb of god oh wash me in his precious blood my jesus christ the lamb of so lost I should have died but you have brought me to your side to be led by your staff and rod and to be called the Lamb of God Oh Lamb of God sweet Lamb of God I love the
Sunday. Um, Sunday is Easter. Uh, we will have the bunny here. It'll be happier than Disneyland on Sunday morning uh, at 8.45 in the morning. You're welcome to the Fellowship Hall for all kinds of donuts and goodies and things of that nature that will migrate over to the vineyard for worship at 10 a.m. That's Sunday. Before we experience the joy that is Easter, we have to face the cross. That's what we do today acknowledge our humanness, our sinfulness, and to be brutally honest with the brokenness of humanity today in front of the cross. After worship uh, concludes today, uh, we will process the cross around the sanctuary and we will leave in silence. I invite you to remain seated and pray if you want, uh, but I do ask that you remain quiet as you leave and exit today and we experience the stillness and the restfulness of Holy Saturday tomorrow so that we can be filled with the good news on Easter Sunday. Would you please stand for our call to worship? <clears throat> Before the cross, we kneel and acknowledge our sin. Our inequity causes us to stumble, O Lord, and you too weep. We place a crown of thorns on your head we pierce your hands and feet, your pain, the agony of people longing to be loved. Sin <clears throat> is our sickness, alive in our hearts, present in our action and inaction. Sinners that we are, we come before you repentant and seeking forgiveness. Your grace rushes to our rescue. Your love has no limits. But we face the cross with mourning. We walk triumphantly as heirs of salvation. <clears throat> you may remain seated.
They tell me Jesus died for my transgressions That he paid that price a long, long time ago When he gave his life for me on a hill called Calvary But there's something else that I want to know Does he still feel the nails? Every time I fail, can he hear the crowd cry, crucify again? Am I causing him pain? Then I know I've got to change, cause I just can't bear the thought of hurting him. It seems that I'm so good at breaking promises. And I treat his precious grace so carelessly. But each time that he forgives, what if he relives the agony he felt on that tree? Does he still feel the nails every time I fail? Can he hear the crowd cry, crucify? again am i causing him pain then i know i've got to change because i just can't bear the thought of hurting him holy time I fail have I crucified you Jesus with my sin oh I'm tired of playing games and I really want to change cause I never want to hurt you again Let us pray. Almighty God, look with loving mercy on your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed, to be given over to the hands of sinners, and to suffer death on the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure how great the pain of searing loss the father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory
But I will boast in Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart, his wounds have paid my ransom. Rarely do we get to hear this story in its entirety. I invite you to find a comfortable position in your chair. Let the Spirit fill your heart as you pay special attention to the characters of this story. I'm wondering who you identify with and when. It's a pretty long story, so if your brain starts to wander thinking about the grocery list or whatever, don't beat yourself up. Just be self-aware enough to bring yourself back to this place, paying special attention to the characters. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 18th and 19th chapter. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidion Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees. They came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward asking them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing there with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, Who are you looking for? And they answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This too was to fulfill the word that had been spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it out. He struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into its sleeve. I am not to drink the cup that the Father has given me. So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus, and they bound him. First, they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for all the people. Simon Peter and the other disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went to Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. And Peter was standing outside the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the woman guarded, who guarded the gate and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of the man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had been a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple. Where all the Jews come together, I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I've said. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is this how you answer the high priest? 
Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas to the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there warming himself. They asked him, Are you not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man who Peter's ear was cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus to Caiaphas, to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to him and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? And they said, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? And Pilate said, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my fathers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So are you a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, what is truth? After he said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but if you have a custom that I release someone to you for Passover, do you want me to release for you the king of Jews? And they shouted in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. Now, Barabbas was abandoned. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wore a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him saying, Hail the king of Jews and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to the crowd, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing a crown of thorns and a purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourself and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he was claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, you would have no power over me unless it had been given to, to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him. But the Jews cried, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Here is your king. 
They cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, we have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to be crucified. So they took Jesus, carrying the cross by himself. He went out to a place called the Skull, which in Hebrew means Golgotha, where they crucified him, him and two others, one on either side, with Jesus in between them. Pilate also had an inscription written over the cross. It read, Jesus, King of Nazareth, the King of Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near that city. And it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of Jews, but this man said that he was the king of Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and they divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven into one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who gets it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother, his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Colophus, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing there, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciples, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took him to his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that it was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and he gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath especially because that Sabbath was the day of great solemnness. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead. They didn't break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this testified so that all may believe and testify to him the truth, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another pastor of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea was the disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus. They wrapped him with spices and linen cloth, according to the burial custom of the Jews. And now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified. And in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, the tomb was nearby, and they laid Jesus in the tomb, the gospel of the Lord. A 
I'm wondering which character you identify with. The age-old question, who killed Jesus? Was it the emperor? Was it the Jewish Pharisees? Was it the crowd that shouted, crucify him, crucify him? Was it Judas? The answer to those questions is yes. Who killed Jesus? I did. You did. Today, we confront the brutality of our humanness. Now the task before you, after you've heard that entire story, is to find places in the world where you hear that story repeated over and over and over again. It happens all the time, every day. We are found guilty. Sit in that discomfort It won't last long, just a couple days. Sit in the discomfort of our broken sinfulness. That's where humanity lives for just a few days. If you find that too uncomfortable, know that Easter is on its way. And it doesn't last forever. But in order to get to the joy, we have to be honest with ourselves and this story. Amen. Gathered into one in Christ, we pray for places, for people, for problems, and for praises. I'm going to guide you through a bidding prayer. There's going to be a moment where I'm going to leave it sort of open-ended. We're going to let the Spirit move. If you feel called to say something, say it out loud. That's okay. It's not about each other hearing what our cries are. Just that you say it, what's on your heart, being honest. We pray for places, for people, for problems, and for praises. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we pray for places... Places impacted by natural disasters, fire, flood, and wind. We pray for places facing the repercussions of gun violence, wartime, or political upheaval. We pray for places we name before you now, either aloud or on our hearts. Lord, we pray for people, for people in our lives that are grieving, that are hurting, that are living through hardship. We pray for people that could use your companionship, your accompaniment, people that we struggle to love. We pray for them. We pray for people we name before you now, either silently or aloud. Lord, we bring our problems to you and lay them at your feet. We know that you are with us in the midst of our troubles. We pray for the problems we name before you now, aloud or on our hearts. Lord, we bring our praises to you. We are grateful for what you have done and continue to do in our lives. We praise you and name before you, either aloud or in our hearts, all that we are grateful for.
We lift all that weighs on our shoulders to you, O Lord, and we praise you through it all. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. O oh, my people, O oh, my church, what have I done to you? Or in what way have I offended you? I led you forth from the land of Egypt and delivered you from the waters of baptism. But you prepared a cross for your Savior. I led you through the desert forty years and fed you with manna. I brought you through the times of persecution and of renewal and gave you my body, the bread of heaven. But you prepared a cross for your Savior. What have you done? I made you branches of my vineyard and gave you the water of salvation. But when I was thirsty, you gave me vinegar and pierced with a so in my side with a sword. I went before you in a pillar of a cloud, but you led me to judgment hall of the pilot. I brought you to the land of freedom and prosperity, but you have scourged, mocked, and beaten me. What have you done? I gave you a royal scepter and bestowed the keys to the kingdom, but you have given me a crown of thorns. I raised you on high with great power, but you have hanged me on a cross. My peace I give, which the world cannot give, and washed your feet as a servant, but you draw the sword and strike in my name and seek high places in my kingdom. What have you done?
I have accepted the cup of suffering and death for your sakes, but you scatter and deny and abandon me. I sent the spirit of truth to lead you, but you close your hearts to guidance. I called you to go and bring forth fruit, but you cast lots for my clothing. I prayed that you would all be one, but you continue to quarrel and divide. What have you done? I grafted you into the tree of my chosen people, Israel, but you turned on them with persecution and mass murder. I made you joint heirs with them of my covenants, but you made them scapegoats for your own guilt. I came to you as the least of your brothers and sisters. I was hungry, but you gave me no food, thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, but you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, you did not visit me. What have you done? All that's left to do is bow my head, give up my spirit, for it is finished. <laughs> 